Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from Gilded Pair Gallery. It's kind of part two of the uh, simultaneous exhibitions that are going up there. Lauren Tucci, gallery manager, is here. Lauren, nice to see you. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for being here. And Maggie Vandewall, uh, who is the subject of uh, an exhibit, who I think, Lauren, is a finalist in the 2023 Best Exhibit Title oh. Race. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know there was one. I didn't. No, that's what's like, where, where are we going? That's, we're good. Animalia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Maggie, welcome. Thank you. Before we talk about the exhibit, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you are uh, you are an Iowa native, mm-hmm. moved away, and now we're back. Mm-hmm. So we'll need a little more than that. Um, I have five sisters. They all live in the Midwest, and we needed to come back home, so we're here. Um, I received an art scholarship to the University of Iowa out of high school. Um didn't actually graduate. I have a semester left with a BFA in printmaking. Uh, okay. All right. The, well, the admissions department wants to talk to you about that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but they're all gym classes, so I figure maybe I'm, I'm cool. I don't have to do them. <laughs> and uh, and this, I know I've had a chance to view the, uh, you know, some of the pictures online of mm-hmm. your work. But uh, so you said printmaking. So, you know, this is, this is always the biggest challenging part of these radio interviews, mm-hmm. talking to a visual artist. So, uh, and I won't ask you to read your artist statement from mm-hmm. memory, but uh, just tell me a little bit about the kind of art you do. Um, I paint very detailed watercolors, not typical watercolors. Um, I use a lot of white gouache, which allows me to layer, so it looks a little bit more um, like an acrylic finish would be. Um, I like to paint animals. I like to paint uh, the landscapes that they're in. Um, printmaking really helped me because I'm very, very detail oriented and the lines in printmaking helped translate into painting when I got out of school because I could not afford a printing press when I got out of school. Uh, and so watercolor and Mm -hmm. you said, uh, now the, when you said the, uh, are these, you know, subjects, some of them are animals and in the habitat, are these, uh, are these realistic or are they more, uh, fantastical? Both, both, um. I did a lot of reading growing up, and I grew up at the Corville Reservoir, so I spent all my days outside or at the library. And um, I got to see a lot of wildlife then, and then that kind of translated into some more fantastical stuff with the, le- the books that I like to read, um, Tolkien and that type of thing. So there's a lot of fantasy involved with some, I mean, there really are drunk bees, so that is a thing. So I can paint those, and then I paint something called a batty cat, which has been fairly popular it's just a black cat with wings bat wings oh well so. okay black cat with wings mm-hmm. uh lauren uh talk about uh, uh about putting this exhibit together and you know what would go next to what you're on the second floor with maggie's mm-hmm. exhibit so the space is a little more confined mm-hmm. how does that impact uh how you stage this um Maggie has plenty of work that is uh, of a smaller scale, and some of them became collections uh, around a theme or uh, around a style of uh, in the environment, right? So some things have hay, and and we connected it that way. Um, and then there are, uh, I would say, really four very large pieces. And they have their own space uh, in a way that's surrounded by some of the smaller pieces. Um, but those large works, when we're talking about working on paper, are incredibly impressive. And so um, I tried to give them as much of their own kind of uh, viewing space as possible. And this is a coincident with uh, Jim Oaks. Mm -hmm. retrospective and Phil was in a week or so ago to talk about his dad and his uh, and his art Uh, is this more of a timing thing in terms of uh, these both came available at the same time or is there a higher purpose in having them at the same time it's interesting because (laughs) um, Maggie came to us uh, not too long ago so this is her introduction show Um, as and we're celebrating uh, you know Jim's work and, uh, you know, we're, we've lost a friend. And so it's kind of a, in a way, a hello, goodbye. Um, but really the work itself kind of paired together interestingly. When we took, uh, took in the work uh, of Jim's a while back, uh, we discovered there's this whole section of very fantastical pieces 
early in his career that people may not have ever seen. And so that's a little bit of that connection there too. Maggie's got a background in printmaking, so the artists themselves are distantly talking to each other, but they're very different work. So that's kind of how this all came about. And we know that Maggie's batty cats are popular, and so we're kind of in the fall <laughs> season and you know leading into yeah. that. So there was a little bit of that too. And talking about good titles, uh, batty cats, first time that word has appeared on the culture crawl. <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is a big day. <laughs> um, Maggie, uh, do you... Have you uh, have you had a chance to kind of look at both, you know, look at uh, Jim's work as well as your own and kind mm-hmm. of see them all in the space? Do you, what, do you, do you agree with what Lauren said? Oh, that uh, Different but connected somehow? Yeah, I agree 100%. I really like your analysis. That's, it's really nice. Thank you. Um, I knew, I met Jim at um, a couple of art shows up in Cedar Falls and years and years and years ago. And I was really impressed with his work, one, because I was a printmaker and he had a lot of prints there, but also because he stapled his work down to work on it, whereas with typical watercolor, you're supposed to use tape. And I didn't like tape because it left a residue, and I, it was great meeting him for just that reason alone, if nothing else. You felt free to use staples. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, if you look very closely at Maggie's art and you see tiny, tiny little holes you. in the corners... <laughs> That is a, that's a feature, not a bug. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, how about, as we said, the um, the exhibits on the second floor, space is a little more constrained, got a couple of really big pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, how difficult was it uh, figuring out what was going to go into this show? Really, it wasn't difficult at all because what I paint... I paint traditionally the same types of things. Um, I did push it a little bit with one of the larger ones, which is um, vintage, which was, um, there's a lot of clothing. It's a closet with a cat in it. Um, But other than that, I knew what the space was. I knew that I paint a lot and it was good. So I was able to fill it, I think, fairly well. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for uh, vintage is the one that is uh, portrayed on the postcard. It yes, is. that's the that's the picture of the closet, mm-hmm. and uh, you have to look almost kind of carefully the way it's cropped because mm-hmm. of it. It had to be cropped mm-hmm. to see the cat in that, but it's uh, yeah, it's very cool. It's a mm-hmm. great Thank piece. You. And as a cat person myself, oh, you any, are any any art that any mm-hmm. art that has a cat in it is oh, uh, mine's is full good. of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one was funny because, and I don't know why they fixated on this. I have a lot of cat lovers as followers, and I chose to paint the back side of the cat with the tail up, and the biggest feature. of and I still don't get it, is the, you know, the little pink... Cat's butt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll just, we'll say, we'll say cat's I, butt. I didn't know if I could say yeah. it, so yeah. I did. We'll say cat's butt. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, Maggie will uh, be uh, at the reception, which is coming up yet this week. We were talking about it when Phil was in, but now we've uh, hit that time and it's coming up on Friday. I know. It's very exciting. From 5 to 7.30 this Friday. And uh, would you like to have people let you know, RSVP, let you know they're coming or should they just show up? You can show up, but it's terribly helpful uh, for us to let uh, to prep ahead of time for how many uh, beverages we need or um, appetizers and such. So it is helpful. Uh, we can um, uh, take in your uh, RSVP of sorts uh, from Facebook or Eventbrite. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I will eat all the food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Maggie, great to meet you. Nice I'm really looking you. forward to seeing uh, the exhibit, both the exhibits. Mm-hmm. And again, uh, the exhibits... Uh, the reception is this Friday, 5 to 7.30. How long will these be up, Lauren? Yeah, if you can't make the reception, it's on view until October 28th. And people can take a look at some of the uh, pieces that are on exhibit on your website, which is? Gildedpairgallery.com. And if they want to find you on Facebook, same? Same. All right. Ladies, thanks so much for being with me today. Thank you. Thank you. You can hear The Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 10.30 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast app. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.